away. Good, Sir, can you close your window? We see you reflected. You're in our movie, unfortunately. Zach, we see you, so if you can close your windows, thank you. Here we go. Let me know when he's traveling. Daniel's gonna be ready in 50 minutes. 50? 50? 5-0. Roll and action. Bit of a no-brainer, really. I mean, you know, it's a best-selling novel um, written by Steve Zalian, directed by David Fincher. It's not, you know, I kind of like <laughs> fucking stupid to say no. Pontus, you good? Keep the rain going. Keep the rain going. Here we go. Rain up. I mean, it was already a good story, so. That was just really how that fell into place. I mean, I wanted to work with David for a long time, so that just made it exciting. Good, start that one. So Daniel, on this one, you'll start right here. In front toe? Yep, in front toe. It's an ass wipe. Here we go. And. Even closer. Right up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There you go, ready? I've made the mistake in the past, as everybody has at some point, is you've gone into making a movie without having a good script or a script in place, and it's always a disaster. So, you know, when the thing came up and Amy Pascal kind of mentioned it to me that they were interested in doing it, I was obviously kind of excited because David was directing it. But the sort of same rules apply, and I think with a project like this, I think even if the script had been nowhere, then I, I couldn't have considered it. It would have just been too much of a, of a mountain to climb. But thankfully, David, I think, thinks the same way. And, you know, the script has to be in, in, a, in really good shape before he'll consider starting to shoot. Well, we met years ago. We met in his office down in East Hollywood, just after Fight Club, which I'd loved. And we just had a kind of long hours chat. And then I've seen him around over the years since. And uh, he came to see me in Tintin when I was dressed in a leotard. He still employed me, so I must have liked what he'd seen. Action! Cut, very nice. Take that one. Cut. Give me one that's just, don't talk to me about it. Don't ask me about it. Action! The joy of Daniel is not just that he's so fucking good, but that you can mine nuance. You know, you can get in between. Zalian writes very sparingly. There's a lot of interpretation that can go on. And the movies, you know, most of the conversations are about manipulation in some kind of way. So there's a lot of spaces between what's being said and what's going on. Like I've been gutted, like I'm running away. I am. The thing that's fueling the is friction got, yeah. is, come on, trust me on this. Right. She's like going, yeah. There is a problem between you and me. He won't be satisfied until he shuts us down. You're leaving me here to fight him alone. A lot of people talk about Elizabeth Sellens as the first character that comes to mind when people, you know, it's the girl with the dragon tattoo. It's not, you know, the guy with the dragon tattoo. It's not the North Pole. But Daniel, He's got a lot to do in this movie. Playing a character, at least how I interpret the character, a character who is he's smart, not quite as smart as he thinks he is, not quite as tough as he'd like to be. That one? Yeah, yeah. And underneath it all is a really good guy. I think it's just as complicated a part as, as Lisbeth's for that reason. I think you'd be a little further away. When from I say no pole. Yeah. Yeah. Ironically, Daniel Craig is this guy that like, Men love him and women love him. Like, you want to be him or you want to have sex with him? You know, it's like, he's just, and in the in that Bloom Kiss character is very much that way. He's like a friend to women, even though he's very charming and he has a lot of sexual relations. He's never manipulating. He's not a womanizer. He's just this even kind of fair person. I just like the guy's politics. I like his attitude. I mean, he's mixed up and fucked up in kind of interesting ways. And the fact that Stig Larsson is sort of a champion of anti-fascist organizations, and Mikhail Blomqvist is the same. He's sort of fighting the good fight, trying to find corruption in big business, and, you know, trying to be the good journalist, whether that's possible to be. <laughs> Once we had somebody who had tremendous movie star appeal, it frees you up to think about taking a different kind of risk. I don't know what the casting of Lisbeth would have been had it not 
been for Daniel Craig. It's kind of, you start there. It's really Bloomquist's movie. He's the way in. It's a two-hander, but it really revolves around his. I mean, even by Swedish standards, a more sort of conventional character. And then she's this sort of orbiting satellite. Who is it? It's Mikael Blomqvist. Actually, I'm not really up yet. May I come in, please? I feel like if the story was only about Elizabeth, it wouldn't work. None of the books are only about her. Hi. I've done other stories where you're dealing with parallel stories or parallel characters. In some cases, they don't get together until the end. Your hope is that each one of the stories is interesting in and of itself, so that an audience isn't kind of more interested in one than the other. And I think in this case, they're equally interesting. His story and her story and how they come together and how they work together and what they're each going through ultimately is why it works, I think. <laughs>